Well, good morning and welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Irv Risch. Today, I'm going to be looking at an article, and it's a short article, The Word and the Throne. So with that said, I am just going to get the article, and I'm going to read it to you. So hang in there. I'll be right back. Well, here we got the article, and uh, I think I've got something wrong here. Let me turn this off. Oop, wrong one. There it is. Okay. Before we read the article, though, I uh, want to look at the Scripture, and the Scripture is in Hebrews 4, verses uh, 11 through 16. I got a tab here. I got Blue Letter Bible, and this is Darby's version. Let us therefore use diligence to enter into the rest, that no one may fall after the same example of not hearkening to the word. For the word of God is living and operative, and sharper than any two-edged sword, and penetrating to the division of the soul and spirit, both the joints and marrow, and the discerner, of the thoughts and intention of the heart. And there is not a creature uh, una, unappared before him, but all things are naked and laid bare to his eyes, with whom we have to do, having therefore a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast the confession, for we have not a high priest, not able to sympathize with our infirmities, but tempted in all things in like manner, sin apart. Let us approach, therefore, with boldness the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace for seasonable help. Okay, let us go to the article. Now, this article was probably written right around the end of a year, going into a new year, and it was extracted from Scripture Truth, Volume 38, uh, 1953 to 1955, uh, about the time I was going into service, and it's from page one. As we enter upon another year, we are reminded that the pilgrimage of the church is going to end in the rest of God. And we do well to listen to the exhortation, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. And the more so since the exhortation leads us to the great high priest who is on the high and connected with him, we find the word of God on the one hand, and the throne of grace on the other. The word of God is indeed profitable for doctrine and instructions in righteousness. As we le uh, learn in other scriptures, but here it is, it's living, powerful, piercing, discerning character that is emphasized as we are uh, concerned with these features, we become aware of how much we need the ministry, the flowing from the great high priest who is in the seat of the supreme power and yet is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It is because of what he is that the throne has become to us the throne of grace, whether it may be to others. Uh, where we read the word, we are listening to God speaking to us, but to the throne we are to come with boldness, for here we have the privilege of addressing ourselves to God. We must, however, in our minds, lay as much emphasis on the fact that it is the throne as upon the fact 
that it is the throne of grace. If we rightly appreciate the fact that it is the throne, we shall at once be impressed by the majesty and gain the sense of our littleness. Grace indicates that those who receive the favor are undeserving, and we are therefore awakened to the fact of our sinless, sin, sinfulness and his mercy. We do indeed need that all these things become increasingly real to us. Let us exhort one another to give the word of God a large and more authentic place in our thoughts and life. Thus we may more clearly judge our own motives and give a more simple obedience to God's will and ways for our steps. Let us also have more uh, recourse to the throne of grace, that we may obtain the mercy and uh, seasonable help that is needed. we need. Only let us maintain in our hearts and express in words an attitude a due sense of the majesty of the one to whom we come, so that in our prayers, and more especially in public prayers, we avoid all undue familiarity to address while maintaining a sense of the nearness in which grace has set us. Let no one think that this brief word of exhortation is unnecessary. Bibles, indeed, are uh, multiplied by the constants of prayerful study. Of them seems to be less frequent. Consequently, the need of prayer and a desire for it seems to be uh, less felt. If God in his mercy granted to us some reviving in both these directions, a benefit to the whole church of God would soon be manifest. And not only so, for we believe there would be an overflowing which would produce uh, an outgathering from the wo uh, world. So many, so may it be to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessings of many. And that concludes the reading of this article by F.B. Hall. So with that said, I will end the podcast.